What is up guys? Welcome to the studio. I'm John the Potter. So good to have you. We have a super exciting video for you guys today. So today we're talking about how to make this spiral action. This is one of my favorite shapes to make. I love it. I love how it feels on your hands if you're not holding the handle. Uh, I love like just the motion of throwing it is super cool and super visually appealing. Uh, these are a couple different examples of spirals. And then I love how the glaze like drips down and then it like falls into the space there. And see like on this one, the glaze drips right into where the spiral act and then it has a different color variation there and then it breaks over. So there's just a lot of things to like about this, but it does take a little time. And so I did a video about this a long time ago and you can go check it out, but I've had a couple more realizations about actually how it's done that I might be able to explain it a little better now. And I've had other potters reach out to me and said like, I've tried to do that and I cannot do it for the life of me. So I want to hop on the wheel and show you guys exactly what I'm thinking about now when I do this spiral action. There's a different shaped one that I threw yesterday that is the same way. So there's just a lot of different things you can do with this shape and I really like it. I wanted to announce our summer sale schedule, all right? June 13th, July 11th, and August 18th. Those are our next three restocks for the summer. Hop on, we'll have at least 200 pieces on each one. It's gonna be awesome. All right, let's hop on the wheel and do it. Show you this spiral thing. Okay, first things first. So I have, this is a, just a little less than one pound. So that'll end up being about a 12 to 14 ounce mug. Boom! And then we're just gonna throw this in the shape. The shape that I use for this kind of spiral is kind of like an hourglass shape. So it kind of goes in like that. So we'll start with that one and we'll do a few different kinds. So So for this shape, I start with a little bit wider base than I normally would, and then I make sure that I'm pulling and going in first, right? So you get that kind of cone shape going up. And then on the second pull, I really focus on getting that clay all the way from the bottom, like that. And then we'll do one more pull, making sure that I compress that lip. So there we go, we got our shape. And now if I want the shape to be perfectly hourglassed, which sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, then I'll take a metal rib and just shape it using that. Get that lip kind of turned out a little so it drinks easily. All right, and then now we're gonna do the spiral. So what I do is I make sure that the outside is wet right? So I just do the little drip on the outside. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking two fingers on the inside, one finger on the outside. And I start basically, you're just like doing what you normally would to do a pull, but you're going slightly faster. So normally when you pull, you know, you're pinching the clay down there and then you're letting the wheel go around at least one time before you go move up. So that's how you move the clay up through the, through the pot. But now for the spiral, you're actually moving your fingers faster than the wheel is. So you can start out going pretty slow, right? I'll do one. And then you push in there right above that second finger. So I'm actually, the, like that's kind of how it looks on the inside right there is I have my, my this finger on the back there and then I just move it up ever so slowly, right? and I make sure that I'm spiraling faster than the wheel is moving, right? And that spiral is actually a little too, like for what I normally like to do, I like to have it be, the spiral be closer together, whereas the spiral is kind of like far apart on this one. It'll still work, it'll still look good, uh, but we'll get some better ones. That was just my first one. So if your wheel is moving slow, then you can move up slower. But if your wheel is moving fast, then you have to go up faster. And so the wheel speed really makes a big difference on how fast you have to go. So I go in there and then I'll start pulling up. 
see how that was a, a much more like consistent we had you know the wheel went around like six times for the spiral on this one whereas that other first one we did the wheel only went around like three times so that's kind of more what i'm after and then i'll take my little wood tool and make my make my base okay call that one good okay so now i'm gonna cut it So keep in mind, I would, normally I would thin it out one more time. So basically what I'm doing from the inside is like this, right? So I have this finger underneath this finger, and then as the wheel spins, I go like this, up slightly faster than I would for a pull. So if the wheel is spinning, you know, I slow it down, and then as I pull, I go up. Because basically what you want is you want your finger to be a little higher as the wheel is going around at a consistent pace. That's the other thing that's super important about it is that you're moving up at the same speed the whole time. So as you move up, you're moving slightly faster than the wheel is spinning. So then you're creating a spiral around the whole cup as it goes up. So you get your finger down there, then you want it to be slightly higher when you get over here so that as it gets higher, then you're getting higher there so that your finger mark, you know, you might get five ridges all the way through, or maybe four, anywhere from, you know, four to seven ridges is kind of what you want, depending on how tall the cup is. Okay, so now we have kind of a shape that's like, a belly to a lip, I don't know what you call it, but I do this shape a ton, it's really popular, I like it, it's super comfortable to drink out of. So, same thing, start at the base, move up slightly faster than the wheel is going, boom. And really, don't get discouraged if you don't get it on the first time, like the timing is really hard, and it just takes like a bunch of times it just takes a lot of trial and error. So, you know, get the wheel going and then try it and then, you know, do another one and try it again. And sometimes you'll be surprised. Like, you'll think that it's not gonna look very good when you throw it on the wheel, but then when you glaze on it, it's it might turn out pretty, like, cooler than you think. So, I mean, I've done this thousands and thousands of times, so it comes easy to me. That's how I do the spiral action. What do you guys think? Have you tried this? Can you do it? Do you like this style of design? I really like it. I think it's so fun to do on the wheel. I think it, the glazing turns out just awesome. So if you guys wanna check out any pots, our summer sale schedule, June 13th is the first restock. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have carved mugs, insanity mugs, crazy mugs, spiral mugs, um, lots of stuff. Comment below if you guys wanna see anything. I'm making stuff like crazy for that restock right now. So if you wanna see something made, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try and make it. Uh, then June 11th and then August 18th. Those three will be, you can really buy pots only from me like a couple days a month. You know, right away when we put the restocks up, typically we'll sell 100 or 150 orders right away in the first day. And then pretty much by the next day after the restock, there's not really anything left. So. That's been the pattern. I'm super, super thankful for you guys. Also, shout out to the patrons on Patreon. So if you didn't know, we have a Patreon page with 
a ton of, we have like 120 patron, patrons right now, and the patrons get access to a pre-sale. So all those restock dates, if you want like first pick on all the pots, then you can become a patron. Uh, minimum of $3 a month, uh, up to five, 10, 20, 15, you can give whatever you want, really. Basically, we send out four to five pots a month to the patrons, so you get a chance of getting a pot. The longer you're a patron, the bigger chances that you get a pot. And then they get access to a pre-sale for all the restocks, so they get to buy pots first. And then they get discounts. So whenever we have like pots left over after a couple days in the re in the restocks, then we'll do like a 25% off or 30% off just for patrons. Uh, so they get money off there. So you can make your money back pretty quick. Uh, anyway, shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate all your support. And I think that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being here. We'll see you guys in the next video.